All right, we are taking a look at this frame as this column that is fixed at the base and then rigidly attached to a beam that has a roller support at the left lateral load of 10 kips. Ultimately, we want to uh, find out how much this structure sways. And we know this from a, the previous setup of the problem, but you'll see the statement here says estimate the reaction at the roller support using the relaxation method. And that's all because of a strategy that we're going to employ. We'll connect together all at much, but all, all here down below. But really, ultimately, we want to find out how much this structure sways. And the reason why we're going to go find that reaction at the roller support is because of what we discover when we look at the statical classification of the system, that we have a total of four reaction components, and we only have then three conditions of equilibrium, which means that we have ultimately then a statically indeterminate system to the first degree. And so that's what we, why we're going to go find this reaction at the roller support. It's going to enable us eventually to find all the reactions and then come back and find out what this sway is at B, because what we're going to do is take this real system that has this load here applied at the mid height of the column and we're going to remove in the primary structure remove AY that's our redundant reaction that we've selected leaving ourselves a cantilever system that you see here and we're going to put the real load on there right and then we're going to come back and we're going to add in what this reaction is and superpose these two together. Now we're going to superpose these in a special way. And that special way involves dealing with when we have this relaxed structure that it's going to deform somewhat like what I'm about to draw. Here we have bending down in that lower portion of the column in this case. We've got a straight piece that comes up because there's going to be no bending moment there. And then right angles remain right angles and we're going to end up with then a downwards displacement here at A caused by that reaction not being present. Right, so that will be a, ultimately a negative value. Note also here B is going to move to the left and because of no shortening of the member A would move over in the oh we got two delta AO so now this gets nasty right we have to have a little sub another subscript there for Y and X to deal with then all those possible different movements of the system right and here's the displacement we've just violated in the primary structure we've allowed that uh, left end to go downwards and it's not supposed to so that means that we're going to have to push it back into place. That's going to create a deflected shape for this same now primary structure, but with a different loading pattern to it that will begin to look something like so. And then we've got this right angle that still needs to be, remain as a right angle. But it is, that beam has shifted over to the right a little bit. And then we've got to get this little beam in there, projecting its length to be the same as it was before. But there's going to be then what we would say is the coefficient or flexibility coefficient at A due to the unit load at A, of course, times the actual reaction at A. It's supposed to be an AY, not a RY. Right, so remember that's flexibility coefficient here. That'd be due to a unit load. And then we scale it up by the unknown amount of AY. We're going to add those two together so that we end up with ultimately compatibility. Compatibility here being that delta A in the original structure now 
is going to be mathematically composed of the sum of what happens in the oops, in the primary structure, primary load, plus what happens then there. And that's going to turn out that delta A is going to be zero. We have to calculate that one, that's the primary displacement. And we have to calculate the flexibility coefficient. And in all of this, what we're going to end up doing is solving for AY. After we have that, we can then come back and calculate all the reactions. Or if our really our goal is to find ultimately delta B, notice something else will be true. That our delta B in the final case will be equal to whatever it was in the primary case plus whatever it is at B due to the unit load at A times that reaction. And so we could really get it uh, straight from there if that's what our final real goal is without actually having to find all the other reaction quantities.